Hey, uh, good morning. I guess it's 11.45. Hey, so good morning here. Hey, I just wanted to uh, um, just answer some of your questions that you've been giving us in terms of COVID-19. A couple days ago, I sent out an email and a text um, which asked, hey, if you have questions, let me see if I can answer those for you. So um, I have all of the questions right here. I got about 40 of them. And um, I'm actually going to answer about a dozen of the questions that you had about COVID-19 and what this means to our school district. I'm going to try to do the best I can. Um, I thought about these a little bit before. Um, I can't say I've got a ton of details right now because things seem to be changing, but I did want to just to try to address these as best I can because I know you have a lot of questions. And um, so, yeah, so let me go through these here. Um, I'm just going to go one by one again. Thank you for all the questions you submitted. Um, you can see I've got a ton here, <laughs> but I'm going to answer some of the ones that there's some there's some recurring themes. So I'm going to try to answer the questions here that um, probably would help the most out. Um, the first question is, will students have to wear masks when they return to school? That is a great question. Um, right now, we don't know that answer. I actually had a meeting yesterday with our administrative team and our nurses. And right now we are preparing to, um, we're ordering all the supplies that are needed for next year in the event that we need masks or other equipment. Right now we just don't know. I don't anticipate that we will get this information um, until midsummer, late summer, until exactly knowing what um, what will be required of our students and our staff when they return. So right now, I just don't know about the masks. However, I will say that we are getting those ordered. Um, we have some ordered already and we're getting more ordered just in case. I know that would be difficult for students, um, especially the younger students in terms of um, wearing masks during school. That would be very difficult um, for them to do. Obviously, we're gonna err on the side of safety at all times. Um, but uh, but that's the answer on masks. The question is, what if the next question is, what if we happen if what happens if we have to close again? A lot of great, uh, a really good question there. Um, what what we're doing right now to prepare for that is we are currently um, trying to increase all of the um, technology that we have across the districts. We're ordering more iPads. We're trying to get. More, we're trying to get um, some hotspots that we're going to um, hopefully be able to distribute to our families um, that would be provided by the school district. That's right now we're in the we're in the mode of um, gathering information from our families about what internet access they have. And um, so right now our teachers are collecting that data for us. We're going to use that data to determine how much. Um, how much, how many hotspots and how many families out there truly need the internet access. So, so if we had to close again, our goal is to make sure that we um, do meet the technology needs of our families and our students. And we've got, we've got a ways to go. We got some things we need to purchase. Here's the good news is I don't know if you just saw it. I literally probably 30 minutes ago posted on our Facebook that we received a $30,000 donation um, from Iowa Premium, which was awesome. So if you know anybody who works from Iowa Premium, please tell them thank you for that. We're also working on a couple other grants right now that could give us a good chunk of money. Um, the other thing that we received is, um, I'm gonna pull this up real quick. Um, from the state of Iowa, we received over $300,000. Um, technology, give me just a second here. I. My, all these numbers going on my mind, I, I want to make sure I say this correctly, but I want to say you received right around $304,000 from the CARES Act from the state, which is going to go towards meeting the technology needs. So we're looking at, you know, probably $350,000 that we have that can go towards technology. So we really feel like we're going to be able to get more iPads, um, more uh, keyboards for our students, um, and also... Um, more, uh, like I said, hot spots for our families. That's the plan. There's still a lot of planning to, to do on that. But if we have to close again, that's what we want to do is make sure that we um, are meeting the technology needs of our families. Um, 
okay, so let's see here. Will the district release the Return to Learn plan early so staff and families have a chance to see it? Great question. So the state is asking us to complete a Return to Learn plan. We are already, um, as a district, planning. Uh, we're already kind of putting together plans on that. Our teachers are actually um, identifying the, um, the standards that the students missed. Um, so we, we school essentially ended... Um, at least in person mid-March. And so the students have missed about two and a half months of um, essential learnings. And so our staff have been working um, for the last month to ensure that all students, will gonna, we're going to help them get caught up next, next year right away. Um, so in terms of the return to learn plan, we've got, we're going to have a task force that comes together in mid-June. So we're about three weeks out from that. Um, and we're going to start um, really defining what that looks like for our district. Like I said earlier, things are changing by the day, so it's very hard for us to know exactly um, what that what learning will look like next year, but we've got a plan that we're working on right now, and then really mid-June is really when the, the work gets going in terms of putting together that plan. The plan is due to the state by July 1st, so we do have about a month until that is due. Um, so that'll include, you know, the safety precautions, the learning, how we're going to meet the learning needs, um, technology. So there's a lot to discuss, but I want everybody to be, um, just to know we've got a, a, um, a task force that'll be brought together starting mid June to work on the return to learn plan. Again, if you're joining us late, I see we've got 30 viewers, which is really cool right now. Um, I'm actually taking the questions that you gave me. Um, that you gave us uh, in the um, the email that was sent, as well as the text where we asked you to give your questions. So I'm just going through some of the main questions that popped up. Um, the question is about baseball. So what precautions are being done for baseball to keep the kids safe? This is a really timely and interesting question. So we do have baseball and softball um, that are supposed to start next Monday, and that's our plan. We've had a lot of conversations um, we the the Walmart conference, the conference that we're in, all fourteen teams in the conference are planning on having um, varsity level baseball and softball, and um, the lower levels of baseball and softball. So just like every other, um, just like every other school in our conference, we're going to have baseball and softball. But obviously, we're going to follow all the safety precautions we can. Here's one step that we're doing that we just decided yesterday is we know if we're going to meet all the safety needs of our students and our athletes, we're going to make sure we have enough um, adult supervision, adults there to help our um, athletes. So we're actually hiring an additional coach for baseball and softball. We actually have that posted right now uh, on Teach Iowa. I believe we have somebody lined up for, for softball, but there is a need for a baseball coach. So we have the need for a, another additional baseball coach who can work with our athletes. And like I said, the reason behind the additional hire was just to make sure we have enough supervision just with our students to make sure meeting the safety needs. Another thing we're doing is we're actually um, going to have our um, high school custodial crew make sure they're disinfecting um, all the equipment, all the area by the softball and baseball fields after each practice and after each game. This is something that, you know, we don't normally go to those lengths um, other other years, but we've got we've been working with our custodial crew to make sure that um, they know to disinfect everything after practices and games. So that's another step. Um, but you know the bigger picture with baseball and softball is we continue to get information daily. We actually had a meeting yesterday and we got information during the middle of the meeting about what transportation might look like. Um, so right now we're working with transportation in terms of transportation of baseball and softball, and then I'll move on. Um, at first it was, the thought was that, um, we would have to do the social distancing for the, for the students on the buses. We heard information yesterday that says, as long as we disinfect and as long as we take safety precautions, then st we could have more. Um, at first, they were limiting it to 13 people on the bus at once, and now they're saying that potentially we could have more than that. Again, that just came out yesterday. 
Luckily for us, our first game is not until June 15th, so we have a few weeks to figure this out more, but I do want you to know that we are going to be looking at all the guidance, working with um, Tama County Public Health and the state to make sure we're doing everything we can for baseball and softball. If you are a baseball parent, softball parent, um, I do believe there's a parent meeting this evening for both baseball and softball. I don't know the exact time I want to say it's at 630, but if that is something that you're interested, I would definitely make sure I would contact either the coaches for either team. Um, so the next question is, um, could we get a decision sooner about what will take place for graduation? So two things that I know are, um, so the I do know that for sure, for sure is always a strong word, but um, on um, Sunday, June 28th is graduation. That's the day for graduation, that afternoon. Um, and right now we actually have, it's real exciting. We're going to get a brand new gym floor that will be starting, that will be, um, that will be uh, put into the gym starting in early June. So that means for two months, basically, that the gym floor is going to be off limits. So graduation for sure, for sure will not be in the gym as usual. It looks like we're, we're going to be having graduation out at the football field. That's the tentative plan right now. Um, is that graduation will be held on Sunday, June 28th out at the football field. I will say there's a graduation committee that meets um, about every week and they're meeting next Wednesday, June 3rd to discuss more plans for graduation. So if you're getting questions about graduation, please help me share the, the news that um, it's definitely not going to be in the gym and it's looking like it will be out at the football field um, on June 28th. Now, again, there's a lot that can happen between now and June 28th. It's very hard to know what things are going to look like in a month. But right now that that is the plan. So um, kind of keep that in mind. The next question I got was how are you going to address gaps in learning? So like I said earlier, if you if you missed, if you're just coming on right now, um, right, our teachers are working really hard to make sure that they are addressing those gaps in learning for students. So what they're doing is they're meeting as a PLC with the teachers on their grade levels. And they're also meeting, so like all the district math teachers are meeting from, you know, the lower grade levels up to the high school grade levels. And they're making sure they're talking to the next teacher and telling them, hey, my, my students missed this concept. I need to make sure that you as the next grade level teacher um, are addressing those needs. So there are some really good conversations going on. We had a really well-developed plan where there are conversations within the grade levels and then in the grade levels going above about what was missed from mid-March until now and how can we make sure next students next year will, um, will uh, make sure they're being taught those, those items. So um, so again, I, I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining that well. I feel like we have a really, I mean, I'm not just saying this. We have an outstanding process set up um, about how we're communicating those missed skills. And um, I really feel good like we are getting to a point where next year's teacher will know exactly what the students missed from the previous year. Um, I'm, hey, your questions are coming in here, here too, which is outstanding. I got a question about prom. So prom was supposed to be on, I mean, we, we, we rescheduled it, I believe, for Saturday, June 20th. The last I heard, the, the, the latest I heard on this was that we were going to make a final decision by Saturday, June 13th, um, which is a week before. And the reason we did that was we wanted to give every opportunity for prom to happen. <laughs> we would love for prom to happen. However, we also need to make sure that we are following all the safety guidelines. So we used um, Saturday, June 13th is kind of like our, um, our deadline for making a decision on prom. So right now, tentatively, we're still looking at Saturday, June 20th. Um, however, we all, I, I mean, that's tentative and, but a decision will be made by June 13th. I did speak with the member of post prom this morning and I told her that we want to do everything we can to make sure, 
you know, I know they've got prizes, donations, some things to give away. We want to make sure that we are still giving away those those prizes to students. We don't want our seniors and our high school students to miss out on all the fun stuff. So even if we can't have prom, um, there's still a plan to get those um, to get those items delivered to our students, to whoever wins. And we've heard, talked about like you know, if you remember like the publisher's clearinghouse where you come with these big checks and surprise you win. So that's, you know, I don't know what they're going to do exactly, but we've talked about that. And so again, if you have questions about prom, we've got a, um, a deadline of June 13th um, to say yes or no, is it going to happen? And then the day for prom was supposed to be Saturday, June 20th. So again, hey, if you've got questions, we've got about 30 viewers right now, which is outstanding. If you've got questions, go ahead. I, I'll just try to address them as they come in. Um, the question that I had earlier was, when is school starting back up? Great question. Um, right now, I'm going to pull up the calendar for next year. Um, I know you can't see it, but I can see it here. Uh, it's at our school district. Um, uh, i got to move this a little bit. It is at our school district webpage. Um, it's under calendars, and it's 2021 school calendar. So... Um, the first day of school for next year is Monday, August 24th, and that's still the plan. So regardless if, um, you know, our hope is that we're back, we, we are in the buildings, that students are able to um, attend just as normal. That's the hope. Um, but of course, we will follow whatever guidelines we are given. But regardless, all parents should plan on Monday, August 24th, being the first day of school next year. Um, we are not at this time looking at moving up the start date any earlier. With that being said, we are also looking at doing some sort of summer school option in August for the students that we um, that hasn't been determined exactly how that's going to work. Um, but we are looking at the month of August that we would um, do some sort of summer school for students to help them get caught up to prepare for for school um, starting up on August 24th. If you got questions, go ahead, type them in there. I see some of them are coming through. I'd love to answer them. Uh, again, the purpose for me was to answer the questions that you gave me um, from the emails and the texts um, that I sent out a couple days ago. I'm gonna keep going here. Will there be an answer as to what will happen with prom after prom graduation? Uh, I kind of talked about that a little bit. If there's no prom, um, okay. So yeah, so we're still planning on, um, like I said, um, uh, but we're still hoping for fr uh, Saturday, June 20th. Again, it's kind of a long shot, but um, I always try to have like an optimistic view of things. Um, and then, um, the, but the final, final day we'll let you know either way is one week before June 13th. There's a couple questions about preschoolers. I totally get it. Um, I would can only imagine parents sending off their students to preschool, their first kid going into school, the concerns they have. Uh, I guarantee you we will do everything we can to ensure that there are safety precautions in place. We will connect with other school districts um, and we will make sure we're working in tandem with our um with the Tama County Health in terms of making sure that we're doing what's best for preschoolers. All the information that I've seen is that, you know, uh, the, and I'm not by no means an expert at what's going on in terms of this, the health issues, but it does seem like you really need to be careful with the, the real young, uh, uh, individuals, the and that preschoolers to me would kind of fall in that boat, and then our uh, the elderly in the community. So we're going to do everything. We're not going to bring students back unless we feel like it, they are in a um, a safe environment, and we are doing everything we can for them. So I don't have the answers right now for preschool. I apologize on that, um, but I did get some questions on preschool, and I just, however I can do it, I just want you to know that um, we will take your concerns and their safety as and um that's our number one priority is to make sure um to make sure that we are um meeting their needs and that we're we're um erring on the side of safety for preschoolers packages where and when do we turn them in you know i don't have that off the top of my head 
you know, what I will probably do because we're getting some preschool questions is I will reach out to um, our um, elementary principal and assistant principal and make sure they um, that we're clearly communicating some preschool questions um, to our community to make sure that those are um, to make sure you have all the answers there. I do not know that off the top of my head in terms of the packages um, when we turn those in. But again, I will have Chris Collins and Brad Schweppe, our two elementary administrators, I will have them answer that question for you and send some sort of communication out. If I'm guessing you're probably go, uh, a going to be preschool parent, I will make sure that they um, are communicating that with you if they haven't already. Um, the question is, are we minimizing student contact and how many students are in a class? Um, right now, we don't know that. I've heard all kinds of things about, um, you know, maintaining the social distancing. Um, but things like I said, I probably said it three times now, things are changing daily. <laughs> and um, we are so far out. I mean, it's not that far out, but we're a ways out from school returning. So June, July, we're three months out um, in three months in this it's kind of an eternity in terms of how fast the news is coming. So I don't know about minimizing student contact at this time. Like I said way back at the beginning, we are going to do everything we can. And we've already ordered some additional supplies, some additional masks. We're looking at ordering some thermometers. I know some are on their way. Um, some sanitizers. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we've already ordered and we're ordering more. I just gave our, I basically told our nurses yesterday, there is no budget at this point um, in terms of what needs to be ordered for the safety of our students coming back for next year. Now, I told them not to go too crazy right now because, again, we are three months out, so we could probably buy some things right now and get some more things um, this this summer if need be. So um, we are going to take, again, the question was, are we minimizing student contact and how many students are in a class? Um, we, we just haven't made any decisions on that quite yet in terms of, because we're just waiting for more guidance. Any word on prom and graduation? I already asked that or answered that. Will we be looking at online-based learning for next year? So we have to be prepared for, and I mentioned this earlier, um, we have to be prepared in, in the event school is shut down for part of next year, we are required to do um, virtual learning for all students. So, and that's, you know, that's daunting. We know how many families don't have internet. We know how many students don't have um, devices with them. So we are currently spending um, a lot of money and, and we just got this donation for $30,000. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, $30,000 from Iowa Premium uh, to help with some of those technology needs. Like we are going to do everything we can to address the technology needs of our um, not only our students but also our teachers we've got some teachers who don't have internet at home either so we're gonna have to figure that out as well but um, will we be looking at online based learning for next year you know we are and we're also looking at um, how can we give our parents the training needed I said parents, um, our staff, the training needed to make sure they feel confident going to next year. So that, as I sit here, there's actually an email going around with our leadership team about what that training might look like. What's tricky for us with our teaching staff is, you know, our staff leave for summer break. <laughs> I, I know it's been weird. It's weird to say summer break, but summer break next Thursday, June 4th. So all of our staff will actually be off contract starting June 4th. So how we get that training to our staff is a question that we have if we're going to help them get trained up over the summer. We've got to do something that follows within the um, the contract or we got to pay them somehow. So we might have to get a look. We might have to get a little creative with how we get our staff trained up on that. Hey, I'm I'm just about out of questions here. Um, if you have any questions, please just type them in at the bottom there. I will try to answer. Maybe I summarize real quick. Um, oh, fifth grade, uh, they want to have a tour. I'm hoping by the time that um, August rolls around, we can still have back to school orientation, the back to school night, I'm hoping. I will say this. I would say all of our administrators would be more than willing, you know, our, our schools aren't necessarily open right now, but let's say they're open in Ju July or August. I know our administrators would be more than happy to give individual tours to students 
and families to make them put them at ease for the following year. So the person who asked a question about fifth grade and getting a tour of the school, um, assuming our buildings open up here soon, uh, where we can do that, we will, uh, I guarantee Mr. Adams, Mr. Bolin would be more than willing to give a tour or, or a counselor or a staff member. Um, and you mentioned the question was, I think this should be done before back to school night. Absolutely. So um, I would encourage anyone who wants a tour, if they're feeling nervous about middle school, high school, elementary, you know, assuming the buildings are open to, to feel free um, to set up uh, a tour with the building administrator. I uh, miss lastly, thanks for the question there. Did you address prom and graduation? I did, but I can talk about it again real quick. Graduation is going to be on Sunday, June 28th. It's sounding, I would give it about a 90% chance right now that it will be at the Trojan football field outdoors. This is because our gym floor is actually going to be completely redone um, starting June 6th or June 8th. I can't remember what day it is exactly. Um, so for sure, we're looking at Trojan Field outside. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like in terms of social distancing at this point, but it's looking like Sunday, June 28th for for um, graduation. Prom, we don't know right now. I mean, that's a long shot. It's supposed to be on uh, Saturday, June 20th. Um, but we are going to give a final answer to all parents in our community um, on, uh, Saturday, June 13th. So you will know what's going on with prom by the 13th. So it looks like if that answered your question, I'm glad, I'm glad we could help out. Are there any other questions out there, um, that I could, and I will save this. You can go back and watch it. You can probably, um, whatever you need to do, but I hope this helps. And I appreciate you giving your questions. This was easy for me. I mean, it wasn't easy because I don't have a lot of questions, but, um, this was, I, I can do this more often. This is, this is no issue. And, um, I guess just leave a, a comment or, or like, or something. If, if you feel like this was helpful, um, just let me know. Or if you want me to do something differently, I can do that too. So, um, okay. I don't see any more questions. Oh, how about sports when school starts? Wow. That's a great question. I've talked a little bit about baseball and softball, which is going to be kind of interesting. It's Practices is, is going to start um, next Monday, and we are going to take every safety precaution we can to make sure baseball and softball, um, that our students are safe, and we are following all the recommendations from the state and the health department. You might have missed it earlier. We're actually adding a an additional coach for both baseball and softball for the pure purpose of making sure that student needs are being met. So I believe we've got four adults for um, for both um, baseball and softball who are going to be on paid paid positions for baseball and softball. I know there's other volunteers as well. The other thing I mentioned for sports earlier, I'll say it again, is that we're actually going to have our custodial um, high school custodial staff make sure they disinfect, spray everything after games after um, practices. And that's not normally something we would need to do, but that's another step that we are taking. Um, but the, Kim's question was about when sports, when school starts. Gosh, great question. We've only been focusing on baseball and softball right now. Again, here at South Tama County, we want to do what's best for kids. So I am hoping, I know how much as a student, I look forward to playing football and basketball. Like that was one of the the most important things I look forward to. So I am still hoping that we're able to come next fall, offer everything, volleyball, cross country, football for our students. I'm hoping that um, everything is back closer to normal. But again, Kim, I can't make any promises right now. It's so hard to say what could happen. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I don't know about sports next fall, but I can say baseball, softball, that um, all 14 teams in our conference are playing. Um, and we're set to play. Um, our first practice is next Monday, and our first game is two weeks from that day. So a um, lot to figure out, a lot of unanswered questions, that we're, but we are taking the information and meeting with our people and communicating as best we can. So I hope that helps, Kim. I, I Sorry I don't have your all the answers there. Are there any other last minute questions here before I log off? I think it's been 
been 25, 25, 30 minutes probably. So um, if there's no other questions, um, I will go ahead and log off, but I don't mind doing this. Again, if you think it's helpful and you want me to do it again next week or in a couple weeks, let me know and I can do it for you. With that being said, last chance for questions. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, I'm going to log off and um, have a great day. Have a good weekend. It's beautiful outside. It's 70. I need to get out there and, and enjoy it here. So, all right, I will uh, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Have a great day. Go Trojans.